musicians in bars getting beer. It's Sam. How's hey, it going? Doing great, man. Doing great. Tell us about what you're doing. These Tonight we are on the street again on Queen Street East for the second night of three nights at the Beaches Jazz Festival Street Fest. Uh, on Sunday we're going to be in Thorold at uh, Donnelly's Pub. There's a big blues circuit just outside in the Niagara region that I didn't know about for the longest time. Oh yeah. And uh, it's pretty cool. A lot of support and so a lot of them are actually right now. Little Magic oh, sorry, Sam. Interrupted. Oh, the Little Magic Sam Blues Band, I guess, yeah. is the full name. And, uh, I mean, everybody's talking in conversations here. Do you want to say, who are they over there? <laughs> so this is Steve Grant, uh, Harmonica, Maya Van Rays, my wife on keys. Uh, back here is Ben Grafham on drums. And that is Drew Danko on the bass right now. All right. Yeah. And uh, where else do you like playing around town? Uh, we play at Sauce on the Danforth, uh, usually once a month. Uh, we play at Castro's Lounge in the Beach every other Friday. Cool. So every two weeks, we're there 5.30 to 7.30. Oh, yeah? Uh, interesting time period, you know, for people to get out, but they come out after work, and yeah. people usually let loose really well, early Castro's in the night. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very cool. And so you've got a, a married a partner in your band. That's right. And uh, how did that come about? Uh, well, I met her in high school, and uh, she, she's a lot more musically sound than I am uh, in terms of theory. And uh, actually, being an all uh, a well-rounded musician, and I used to cheat off of her answers in high school uh, music really? class, and then she got me through theory class in college. What a great story! And we've been dating for I guess we've been together for 14 years. We've been married for four. And you're already you're still young. Yeah, we're 31, and uh, we're feeling it now, though. You know, last time I played here, I think I was 26, and uh, it feels like a I feel like a different person, completely different band. Um, but I feel like it's it's a similar sound that just evolved over time. A lot of original blues and soul and, and some covers as well. Yeah, tell us more about the influences. Yeah, so we try to write stuff in the style of uh, 50s and 60s Chicago, um, Chicago and Texas blues. A lot of chess record stuff, uh, Delmark, that kind of stuff. I love B.B. King, Buddy Guy, you know, Junior Wells, Muddy Waters, all of the greats. Um, and we try to write stuff based around that kind of a, that kind of a vibe. And then we'll put covers in the set as well that'll just fill that in so that you feel like you're experiencing a night at a blues fest back in 1959 or, you know, 1962 or something. Yeah, I, I also noticed that you're the kind of guy who, uh, when you put on a show, it's nonstop for hours and hours. And <laughs> yeah, hours. <laughs> I don't want to stop. Yeah. And uh, somebody has to get a hook and, and reel me off the stage or yeah. just cut the power. Like a Springsteen type or something like oh, that. Oh, well, I mean, Bruce does stuff that's it's just insane to yeah. me, personally. I don't think that guy sleeps, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. Once you, you start feeling the crowd and you get the energy coming back to you from the audience, yeah. you just don't want to let it go. That's you don't want to you don't want to stop. You know? Very cool. And um, any recordings out there? Yeah, uh, during the pandemic, we put out I think eight eight or nine singles, um, and this fall we hope to release a, a full length if we can get in and, and do it live off the floor. So how do we find you? Uh, Spotify, music? Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube. Magic Sam. Yeah, Little Magic Sam. Little. Yeah. Okay. And there's a reason for that. I love the original Magic Sam from Chicago. He passed away at 31. He's the age that I am now. Uh, oh he had a heart attack. He had a terrible life, uh, worked really hard. And right before he passed away, he was going to get signed to uh, Volt, Volt Records uh, on behalf of Stax Records. And then he passed away. So he left this big kind of question mark in the blues world. Uh, his band went on. And when I was in New Orleans a few years ago, I met little Freddie King. And his real name's not Freddie King, but he loved Freddie King. So he just decided that he would adapt uh. that. And instead of doing a bunch of Freddie King covers, he just does originals kind of from the same time period. Great. So kind of the same thing, and, and we wanted to carry that on in Canada, and I didn't know a lot of people that were doing that, so that was that's what we decided to go with. And so we have a venue in common down here. You want to tell the story? Yeah, like Peppery Cat. Yeah. What did the Peppery Cat start as, though? I'm trying to... Before the Peppery Cat? Before the Peppery Cat. I, it was Michelle's a while back. Oh, it was right okay. next to Michelle's. At okay. Least. I don't know, but I used to, there was some really nice food in there. Yeah, yeah, funky spot. Yeah. Uh, I remember just having a big garage door open, so yeah. during Jazz Fest, they had shows going on, which I thought was crazy, but it worked so well. And the Jazz Fest was going on in the street. They would do shows with air conditioning yeah. if people wanted to pop in for a minute. We played a bunch of different shows there for, I guess, a year and a half. So do um, some name straight. dropping. Who played with you in there? Oh, we had Bobby Cartola. Uh, that was his last show before he passed away. Um, we played... Uh, we played Fortune Teller and a couple other of his hits. Uh, Robbie Lane uh, from Robbie Lane and the Disciples got up and played Fannie Mae and a bunch of his tunes as well with us. 
Um, we had uh, Greg, Greg Jerome. yeah, yeah, Jerome Gabu, uh, Greg God Godovitz. Yeah, like Jer- well, we used to do you know shows where we would do a song that would last 15, 20 minutes, yeah. and you never knew what you were going to get into. <laughs> Jerome just says, "Okay, it's going to be in this key," and then he'll change three different, four different times during the song. And the trick is to be fast enough to catch his changes and just do it. Yeah, Jerome. really look up to him. And Greg, and uh, yeah, there, there were some great gigs in that little building. All great, yeah, yep. So uh, you went from there to Sauce, or have you always been doing Sauce? Well, we played Sauce, I guess, just after that gig, around that time. And we were doing every, uh, I think the first Sunday of every month. And then, uh, then we started doing more frequent shows. And I think the day that everything shut down before the pandemic, we played Sauce, and that was our last show. And I remember looking out at the crowd, it was March the 16th. Uh, of 2020 and I remember looking out and thinking this is probably going to be the last that we see these people for quite a while and I didn't know how long <laughs> really didn't know how long but uh, I knew it was going to change this is me how you doing Maya you've been introduced so say hello to the people hello nice to meet you this is musicians in bars getting beer but we don't always do that so uh, yeah so tell us about uh your music history. Well, <laughs> well, he says you're the educated one. I, I went to school for classical. You know, I wanted to get out of class, so I took piano lessons because the piano teacher was beside the school. But uh, no, my grandpa played Scott Joplin and a lot of stride piano growing up. So that was always I was always really fascinated at Christmas time. He'd get on the organ or on the piano and play. Um, so just a lot of years of classical training, and then I met this guy, um, and Sorry, obviously. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gotta be a cool. But classical's not cool. We right? had a different band, and Maya would just she would come to shows and watch, um, but she wasn't a, <laughs> she wasn't a part of the band for a while. And I guess uh, you started with us four years ago now, something yeah, like that. Yeah, four or five years with the East End Love. Maya's very now. first time recording in a studio was down at Sun Studios in Memphis. And I said if you could get wow. through that and the nerves that we were all feeling that night. Um, it was the original East End Love lineup, so it was Dave and Jace and, uh, and Maya. And we ended up having a whole night at Sun to ourselves. And then you get there, and you're all ready, you practice, and you, you just start to get so nervous realizing the history in that room. Yeah. But that was your first recording Yeah, that was very intimidating. you nailed it. So if you can do that, you can do anything. And, uh, and I knew. I knew you would be an amazing fit. That's Blues great. is an adventure, right? Like the people you meet and... Uh... Tell us more about your name dropping yeah. people. Uh... Any other teachers you want to? Oh. oh, I mean, oh, the teachers I've had. You had some amazing ones at U of T. Gerald sure. Freeman and Brian McDonough. Uh, but I mean, in a more bluesy sense, I look up to Ray Charles and Leon Russell the cool. most. I love Leon Russell. Uh-huh. Just his ability to bring so many people together. We got to uh, we got to open for Chuck Lee Bell from the Rolling Stones a couple wow. of years ago, and seeing yeah, him that play was so cool. and getting to hang out and actually pick his brain a little bit after the show, just kind of. He's a really down-to-earth musician who's a musician's musician. He doesn't get caught up in the celebrity or anything like that. But he had real stories about his heroes and who he'd listen to and how he listened to Jerry Lee Lewis and, and Leon Russell, and he was able to take that stuff and turn it into what he does with the Rolling Stones now. And it just felt like you can come from such a grassroots level, and if you can kind of dream big enough, you really don't know what you might end up with. You might hit a, a bad turn and, and not accomplish what you want, or things can come out of nowhere. And you have to be ready for it if they do. So be professional and be on time. And but I must prepared. say, having having a, a keyboard player in our band that has that kind of a, a knowledge in terms of both classical, pop, contemporary, blues, and jazz, um, it rounds us out a lot uh, as a group. And I think it just adds a, a piece that we were missing for a really long time. One question I forgot is yeah. from Woodstock: Why is music the great communicator? Um, <laughs> It sounds cheesy. I think it's universal in the sense that you don't need to be verbal. Um, it, it transcends language or gender or race um, or, uh, or lifestyle. It's just something that uh, I think is part of our collective consciousness as human beings that we're born with and that we die with. And it's something that we can enjoy and access no matter what. No matter what happens in this crazy world. <laughs> That's great. How do you want to close out? Please keep coming to shows <laughs> now that things are open again. Uh, go at your own pace, but please understand that the entertainment industry that you supported before is still very much here, still needs your support and your help, and it will be there for you when you need it too. It's a give and take, and uh, that's the beautiful thing about live entertainment, but it goes away if you don't support it. That's, are you a dot com? Uh, littlemagicsam.com. So 
info to shows and you can see all of our upcoming dates and check out if there's one near you. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Oh, thank Thanks, you so much. Maya. Thank you. All right, guys. Take right. care. Have a good show. Mr. Tonight. Z, thank you, sir. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs>